So, Father God, let us not be distracted by the tactics of the enemy, Father, but let us remember who we are in you, Lord God, and that your spirit lives in us, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father, we'll be so careful to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor that's due your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord, and truly is a blessing to be able to stand before you today. Amen. Truly, God is good. You know, when you think about everything that occurred throughout the course of the weekend, it's like, God, you're just so good. Come on, Hallelujah. God, you are so faithful. Yes, yes, yes. You know, Minister Dominic lives in Poinciana, and God takes him over that highway each and every day. Right. Thank right. you, Lord. Right. Thank you, Lord. Right. Right. Yes. Right. I mean, these are the things that we can't take right. for granted. That's right. Because right. we automatically assume that when we leave our house, that we're, that we're supposed to make an right. exit, but it's only because of God's Come grace great. and his mercy yes. Yes. that he keeps us. Okay. Amen? Amen. Amen. He Amen. keeps our children yeah. when they go to school. Because we're not there with them. We have no idea what's going on. And so they come home and share it with us. And then we hear what they said. It's like, God, we know that you have watched over them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That you have protected them. Yes. In spite of all the craziness and the chaos that's Inspire going on in our world today. Inspire. God, you're so faithful. Thank you, Lord. And every time we leave the house, we always pray Amen. for safe travels. If I'm yes. just going to the public, which is like two minutes from me, God, I believe in you for safe travels. Thank you, Lord. Because I know it's only by the grace of God that I'm able to stand here. Thank you, Lord. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We're going to keep pressing on. Amen. 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 We're not going to let it stop us. Amen. 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 So I was like, Lord, what is it that we your people need to hear. And how many times have we heard that saying, there's an elephant in the room? And we try to ignore it. We try to push it under the carpet and it's too big. We try to walk around it. We can't get by. We can't squeeze by. We're still trying to function. But living less than that abundant life that God has called us to. My God, my God. And we want to say that we're living this abundant life, but when we really examine ourselves, through the word of God, Psalm 91 says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. And you have to ask yourself, where is your dwelling place? Where is your dwelling place? And what is that elephant that's facing you today? Is it fear? Is it anxiety? Is it depression? Is it unmet needs? unrealistic expectations and the time that the church is living in is not time for us to be quiet Amen. it's time for us to have a voice because there is so much that's occurring Amen. in the land and some of us are sleeping mm. and the Lord is saying it's time to wake up Amen. because sometimes we don't want to say anything because we don't want to rock the boat but yet we're praying for peace Right? right? Now we know the scripture says that he that keep his mind stayed on him, he will keep him in perfect peace. Mm -hmm. And then we have to realize that sometimes in order to have that peace, that issue has to be confronted. Mm -hmm. We can't keep acting like it doesn't exist, like it's going to go away. We go to family reunions still upset about something that happened three reunions ago, mm -hmm. but nobody wants to say that this is the issue. Marriages are suffering today because no one wants to confront the issues that all I'm asking for you to do is this. And if you can do this for me, the door that it opens up for me to really serve you. Right. Amen. And I know people don't like to hear that word serve, but that's what God has called us to. He's called us to be servants. We're to be submissive one to another. Amen? Amen. So when Pastor D was alive, he knew not to ask me to do anything outside the house. I wasn't cutting no grass. I wasn't taking out no trash. You know, and sometimes he said, well, can you just come out here and just sit with me while I do these things? And then it's like, well, what's the temperature? But it was too hot. I'm not going. Okay? But I will take you something cold to drink. Amen? 
But how often do we not share with one another what we have need of? And if you see so your brother or sister stumbling in something, will you correct them? When my kids come to me with a problem, and Sister Rose said it the other night, the first thing we ask, did you pray? Right. <laughs> did you pray about it? That's right. And now we have this thing, do you want me to say anything? <laughs> or do you want me to just listen? Because <laughs> if you bring me the problem, I'm going to come up with a solution for you. Amen? And you is not the one that they want or that they like. Right. Amen? So we have to set these guidelines. Now the Lord said, bring your cares to me because I care for you. That's what God says. But we don't do that. We have issues in our families and we will let them persist without addressing it. You know you did wrong. You know the Holy Spirit was convicting you and you did nothing about it. And the one thing that the example David left for us is that he always was willing to admit his fault. Yes. Uh -huh. And that's why God could call him a man after my own heart because David would admit, I made a mistake. I stumbled in this area. And he would run to God for forgiveness. Amen. But we now, we try to be politically correct and we don't want to address issues, but Jesus said that he didn't come for those that were well, he came for those that were sick. That's right. And if he saw something that needed correcting, he didn't have any problem speaking the truth in love. That's right. And that's the part that we miss today. Ooh. We need to speak the truth mm. in love. Yes. Yes. Let our words be seasoned with salt and be led by the Holy Spirit. Ah, ah. And that's what we're missing. We have this power that lives within us yes. that we don't even tap into. Uh -huh. Jesus said that in order for him to come, the Holy Spirit, I have to go. Yes. Because I'm not going to leave you without help. That's right. I'm not going to leave you without a comforter. But we don't like to talk about the Holy Spirit. And every decision you make, he's right there. Yes. He is with you every second of the day. Yes. That is that power that God has given us that we don't even tap into, we don't even cultivate it right. to help us to deal with the conflicts that we face in life. Amen. So yesterday, me and my daughter, Deborah, we was talking. And we was talking about some different scenarios. And it was like, well, how do you face, how do you deal with this? And then it says, what does wisdom say? What does wisdom say? And where does the wisdom come from? It comes from God. Because he says, if you lack wisdom, let any man ask of me, and I will give him as much as he needs. That's right. So when people are like, I don't know what to do, have you sought the Lord? And then have you quieted your soul that you can hear his answer? But so often, we get caught up in our emotions. So one of our elephants are our emotions. Our emotions. Because we get caught up in our emotions, we're looking at the situation, right. and we're saying it looks hopeless, right. it looks pointless, how is this going to work? Not even inquiring of the Lord. Amen. And God is saying, in order to deal with some of these conflicts in your life, you've got to bring them to me. That's right. you've got, and you've got to be willing to speak whatever God has given you to speak. Amen? Amen. So let's look at Matthew chapter 21. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And I'm going to read verses 12 and 13. And the word of the Lord reads, Jesus entered the temple and began to drive out all the people buying and selling animals for sacrifice. He knocked over the tables of the money changers and the chairs of those selling doves. He said to them, the, script, the scriptures declare my temple will be called a house of prayer but you have turned it into a den of thieves. Okay, so now we don't have to sell animals for sacrifices, but what is going on in the body of Christ and God's churches across the land that should not be? Jesus had no problem addressing the issue. He didn't go in there and say, well, maybe I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. I don't want to correct them and hurt, you know, and stomp on their feet. He addressed the issue so that change could occur. And some things are not changing in our lives 
because one, we're not surrendering it to God, and then we're not being obedient to what God has told us to do. Because we get caught up in our feelings instead of recognizing that this battle that we're in is spiritual. So just because little Johnny is acting crazy, that doesn't mean that's Johnny. It's that spirit that's provoking that child. And you have to address that spirit by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? But so often we look at what people are doing and we judge them by what we see their actions are saying and not looking at it spiritually. That is not that person that's doing that. I was sharing with Elder Phyllis, me and the girl who was driving down Orange Avenue yesterday, I just happened to look out my window and this little girl did like this at me. You don't even know me. And Deborah looked and she said, that's a spirit. And so it must be addressed spiritually. That's right, that's right. Because first of all, I don't even go downtown like that. So it's not like you've seen me that much. But just the boldness of the times that we're living in. And it's not time for us to draw back. It's not time for us to draw back. It's time for us to address these things. Amen. Our children don't like them when we correct them, but we're correcting you with love. Because if you're doing something that we know that you shouldn't be doing and that's not in line with the word of God, we will be less than not to say something. But how often? Because it's not time for even my children's friend. There's a time when we, you have to be the parent. And say what needs to be said. But if you speak the truth in love and if you're led by the spirit of God, Whatever their reaction is, that's their reaction. Yes. As long as you be, know that you're being led by the Spirit of God, that's between them and God. But God is holding you responsible right, right, right. to say this is what's going on and this is what's occurring and you need to address it. Amen? Amen. Let's look at John chapter 21. Because another thing that we get concerned about is what did God tell you to do? You know, you're not even asking God, what did you tell me to do? But what did God tell you to do? And then we look at each other. And Elder Bill's not doing what she's supposed to be doing. And I'm just using her for an example. I know she stayed up all night watching Netflix. I know she wasn't in prayer. But let's look at John chapter 21, starting at verse 15. Amen. And I'm reading from the New Living Translation. And the word of the Lord says, what did I say to you? John 21, I'm at John 15. John 21. Verse 15. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and you went and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know about what kind of death he will glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. Peter turned around and saw behind them the disciple Jesus loved, the one who had leaned over to Jesus during supper and asked, Lord, who will betray you? Peter asked Jesus, what about him, Lord? Jesus replied, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? As for you, follow me. So the rumor spread among the community of believers that this disciple wouldn't die. But that isn't what Jesus said at all. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? So then we look at each other. You know what God has told you to do. Why aren't you doing it? Jesus asked Peter three times, if you love me, do you love me? And if you do, feed my sheep, take care of my sheep. Then Peter looking and saying, well, what about him? And Jesus says, I keep him alive until I come back. What business is that, is that of yours? And that's the problem today. So often we're in other people's business. Instead of doing what God has instructed us to do. What did God tell you to do? And that's what God wants you to be focused on. 
Don't compare yourself with anybody else. Don't compare your calling to anybody else's calling. Don't compare the anointing that's on your life to anybody else's anointing. What has God called you to do? And that's what he wants you to be obedient. God is saying that if you love me, then do what I say. I'm giving you this assignment to you. And it's not for you to try to pass it on to someone else or to wonder what somebody else's assignment is. That's right. I have told you that this is what I want you to do. Jesus was not afraid to confront Peter, mm -hmm. even with that simple question. Right. And we may be saying, oh, but that was just a simple question he asked. But Jesus had to remind him who he was. Right. You be obedient to everything that I told you to do. Don't worry about what this disciple is going to do. And that's what God is speaking to us today because we're comparing ourselves and we're looking at other things and we're saying, well, why are they getting away with it? Just because somebody may look like they're getting away with something right now, right now. God is saying, I see everything. Right. You walk up right. Amen. You stop trying to copy what somebody else is doing. What did I tell you to do? What word did I speak into your heart that you have not finished yet? That's what you need to be focused on. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing. No, we just sing that song. I know who I am because of God who says who I am. I don't have to look like anybody else. I have to I have to do anything like anybody else. My children always say, "Mom, just do you," because I'm all about comfort. So it's very easy for me to put on a jean skirt and some tennis shoes and let my socks be showing. Because like, you know my kids, they don't like the socks showing, but that's my comfort. They was like, "Mom, if that's what you like, just do you," and that's what I do. Because that's who God, God has not called Marion to be anybody else. Right. I don't have to dress like anybody else. Right. I can have my own style, whether you like it or not. Amen. I am who God says I am. Amen. 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 And as long as I'm just like totally mismatching colors, <laughs> just leave me be. And let me do and be the woman that God has called me to. Amen. But how often do we try to fit people in our mold? Right. How often do we do that? And now you've got churches that's trying to mimic other churches. And when our goal is to harvest souls, to make disciples, not for membership, but that, that we can go out into the world and compel others to be saved. Amen. Amen. Amen? Acts chapter 6, verses 8 through 15. Now we're going to be talking about Stephen. Because we're talking about, the Lord is saying we know we it's okay to address, but it's the way that we do it. And that's why it's so important for us to rely on the Holy Spirit. We're trying to do things without asking God, is this what you have for me to do today? Is this action that I'm doing pleasing you? Think about some of the things that you do. Have you asked God, are you pleased with me when I participate in this activity? Are you pleased with me, Lord, with the life that I show people in church and the life that I have outside of church? Amen. God, are you pleased with my posts that I put on social media? I mean, we just sing that, sing that song, we want God to be glorified. Is God being glorified in everything that you're saying and doing? And it's not about being super spiritual. The word of God says in Galatians 5, 16, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So whatever your flesh is lusting, is it in line with the word of God? And if it's not, then you should not be doing it. And we're wondering why these doors are open in our lives and why we're facing some unnecessary conflict because we're not walking in the spirit. We're not, being, we're not listening to what the Holy Spirit is telling us to do. And then we get frustrated when we see people acting a certain way and we know that it's against the word of God and especially when it's people of God and we will not say a word. You know what we say? Oh, I will pray about it. But if, you, if somebody comes to you with a different way of thinking that you know it's not in line with the word of God, why can't you say, wait a minute, what does the word say? Is, can you find that in the word of God? Did God tell you that specifically? 
or are you being motivated motivated by the lust of your flesh? And we need to ask these questions. But we don't want to offend. And we don't want to hurt feelings. And it's not about hurting feelings. Sometimes we have to ask those tough, tough questions to prevent someone from having a shipwreck. I mean, you think about it. When God came and saw us, he came and he saw us in our darkness and he pulled us into his marvelous light. He pursued after us. But we will watch people stumbling along in darkness and we won't say anything. And yes, most definitely prayer is good. But sometimes you've got to reach out a helping hand and say, let me help you walk this way. Let me tell you my testimony to let you know that God can bring you out, that God can bring you through. But if we keep silent and we see the elephant in somebody else's life, we can't even recognize the one in our own. What help are we? If somebody makes a mistake with the scripture, gently correct them. No, wait a minute, that's not what the word says. That's not even in the word, it's just something that we've, we've adopted. But being willing to speak out, amen? amen? So in Acts chapter 6, we're going to start talking about Stephen. So Acts chapter 6, verse 8, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed amazing miracles and signs among the people. But one day, some men from the synagogue of freed slaves, as it was called, started to debate with him. They were Jews from Cyrene, Alexandria, Cilicia, and the province of Asia. None of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit with which Stephen spoke. None of them could stand against the wisdom and the spirit with which Stephen spoke. So then what did they do? They persuaded some men to lie about Stephen, Stephen saying, we heard him blaspheme Moses and even God. This roused the people, the elders, and the teachers of religious law. So they arrested Stephen and brought him before the high council. The lying witnesses said, this man is always speaking against the holy temple and against the law of Moses. We have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy the temple and change the customs Moses handed down to us. At this point, everyone in the high council stared at Stephen because his face became as bright as an angel's. So right there, God stepped in. He said he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. So Stephen was being accused of blaspheming with Moses and even God. And God stepped in. So even though these, these men came forth lying about Stephen, God was right there with Stephen. Now Acts chapter 7 is 50 verses. I'm not going to read all the verses. But it says, Then the high priest asked Stephen, Are these accusations true? Now, if Stephen had been caught up in his flesh, how would Stephen have responded? But because Stephen was full of wisdom and power from God, this was Stephen's reply. Brothers and fathers, listen to me. Our glorious God appeared to our ancestor Abraham in Mesopotamia before he settled in Haran. God told him, leave your native land and your relatives and come into the land that I will show you. So Abraham left the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran until his father died. Then God brought him to the land where you now live. So Stephen took him all the way back to where God had instructed Moses. Amen? So I'm going to skip down some verses. So then he started talking about the patriarch of Jacob. It says, These patriarchs were jealous of their brother Joseph, and they sold him to be a slave in Egypt, but God was with him and rescued him from all his troubles. And God gave him favor before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. God also gave Joseph unusual wisdom so that Pharaoh appointed him governor over all Egypt and put him in charge of the palace. But a famine came upon Egypt and Canaan. There was great misery and our ancestors ran out of food. Jacob heard that there was still grain in Egypt, so he sent his sons, our ancestors, to buy some. The second time they went, Joseph revealed his identity to his brothers and they were introduced to Pharaoh. Then Joseph sent for his father, Jacob, and all his relatives to come to Egypt, 75 persons in all. So Jacob went to Egypt. He died there, as did our ancestors. Amen? Amen. So like I said, I'm not reading the whole thing, so I'm going to go down, but I want you to read the whole thing when you go home. Amen? Amen? So then in verse 30, 40 years later in the desert near Mount Sinai, an angel appeared to Moses in the flame of a burning bush. 
When Moses saw it, he was amazed at the sight. As he went to take a closer look, the voice of the Lord called out to him, I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moses shook with ter terror and did not dare to look. Then the Lord said to him, Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their groans and have come down to rescue them. Now go, for I am sending you back to Egypt. So God sent back the same man his people had previously rejected when they demanded, Who made you a ruler and judge over us? Through the angel who appeared to him in the burning bush, God sent Moses to be their ruler and savior. And by means of many wonders and miraculous signs, he led them out of Egypt, through the Red Sea, and through the wilderness for 40 years. Moses himself told the people of Israel, God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Moses was with our ancestors, the assembly of God's people in the wilderness, when the angels spoke to him at Mount Sinai. And there Moses received life-giving words to pass on to us. But our ancestors refused to listen to Moses. They rejected him and wanted to return to Egypt. They told Aaron, make us some gods who can lead us, for we, do not, we don't know what has become of this Moses who brought us out of Egypt. So this is Stephen's testimony to his accusers. Amen? So they made an idol shaped like a cow, and they sacrificed to it and celebrated over this thing they had made. Then God turned away from them, abandoned them, to serve the stars of heaven as their gods. In the book of the prophets it is written, what was it to me you were bringing sacrifices and offerings during those 40 years in the wilderness, Israel? No, you carried your pagan gods, the shrine of Molech, the star of your god, Rephon, and the images you made to worship them. So I will send you into exile as far away as Babylon. Our ancestors carried the tabernacle with them through the wilderness. It was constructed according to the plan God had shown Moses, shown to Moses. Years later, when Joshua led our ancestors in battle against the nations that God drove out of this land, the tabernacle was taken with them into their new territory, and it stayed there until the time of King David. David found favor with God and asked for the privilege of building a permanent temple for the God of Jacob. But it was Solomon who actually built it. However, the Most High doesn't live in temples made by human hands. As the prophet said, Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Could you build me a temple as good as that? Asked the Lord. Could you build me such a resting place? Did my hands make both heaven and earth? You stubborn people, you are heathen at heart and deaf to the truth. Must you forever resist the Holy Spirit? That's what your ancestors did, and so do you. Name one prophet your ancestors didn't persecute. They even killed the ones who predicted the coming of the righteous one. The Messiah you betrayed and murdered. You deliberately disobeyed God's law, even though you received it from the hands of angels. The Jewish leaders were infuriated by Stephen's accusation, and they shook their fists at him in rage. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed steadily into heaven and saw the glory of God. And he saw Jesus standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. And he told them, look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing in the place of honor at God's right hand. Then they put their hands over their ears and began shouting. They rushed at him and dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. His accusers took off their coats and laid them at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they stoned him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. He fell to his knees shouting, Lord, don't charge them with this sin. And with that, he died. What a powerful testimony that Stephen said to his accusers. And he was not fearful because why? The power of the Holy Spirit was upon him. Amen. And it was leading him and guiding him in what to say and how to say it and when to say it. And that same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, that same Holy Spirit that spoke through Stephen is the Holy Spirit that resides in us today. So there is no excuse for us to say that we're fearful of anything. God says, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Do you know who you are in Jesus today? 
Do you know your identity in Christ today? You are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. That is your power. That you take everywhere that you go. And then we wonder why we're under such attack. Jesus already said that we're counted as sheep for the slaughter daily. But your flesh does not have to react to it. Because we are more than conquerors through Christ. We already have the victory. Amen. Whatever it is that you're facing today, you have the victory over it. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And it's not like that Jesus said that in this world you're going to have tribulation. Right. But it doesn't have to move us, and it doesn't have to shake us, and it doesn't have to make us panic. Amen. Because we know that God is in the, on the throne in heaven, and that the earth is his footstool, yeah. and that he's watching over his word to perform it. So what can man do to us? Amen. If there is God before us, who or what can be against us? God recognizing the power of the Holy Spirit that abides in you. So why can't you address conflict? Why can't you speak the truth in love? Why can't you ask the Lord to season your words with salt? Why are you moved by the things that we're seeing? Why are we moved by the things that people say? And yes, that spirit irritated me yesterday. Because I'm like, little girl, you don't even know me. <laughs> but recognizing this battle is spiritual. Right, right. <clears throat> and it must be fought spiritually and not in our flesh. Amen. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to fight battles even with our children in our flesh. Well, we need to address that spirit come spiritually. On, Jesus, come on. And say, you will not That's right. That's take advantage right. of me. That's right. You do not have authority over me. Yes. God has given, right. put me in this place. Yes. Right. And I don't care whether you like me or not, but you're going to respect my Amen. position. Amen. And we've got to be willing to say these things by the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when you see parents that are scared of their children, there's something wrong with that. That should not be. And when they think they're too grown to live with you, have at it. <laughs> Find yourself a place to live. Amen. 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 Find yourself a place to live because as for me and my house, yeah. Come on. We, will. we will serve the Lord. So that means this song, when you come into my house, it's some music that you will not hear. Because they're not allowed to play. And I don't care. I mean, Brandon is 30 years old. <laughs> Deborah 29 and Brittany 26. And if I hear something that I don't like, wait a minute. What's that sound that I hear? And thank the Lord that they have not given me trouble like that. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. You know, because they can laugh and joke with me all about all the Christian songs, and they can they gotta memorize. They're like, Mama, you drove us crazy. But you know it now. Come on. You know it now. And that's what you can stand on. Yes. That's the legacy we want to leave for our children, a legacy of faith. Yes. A legacy of faith and having faith in God and knowing what it means to serve him. But rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. We can sing that song where it says there's a weapon of power that lives within us that we don't even tap into. We don't even cultivate or walk with the Holy Spirit. He's right there with us. A helper walking alongside us. Amen. And when we're getting ready to do something that we shouldn't, or getting ready to say something that we shouldn't, yes, sir. you know, people say, I'm going to put my holy, you know, put my salvation on this. You can't do that. You're not allowed to. Because you have been bought with a price. Right. So, Father, I have to surrender to what your Holy Spirit is saying to me. And we don't use this to rant at people. Or to get our own way, but we live, we live, we use it to express the word of God, to speak the truth in love, that our words be seasoned with salt. That I love you because I love you. I love you enough to say no, just like God tells us no. He doesn't always tell us yes, because He sees much further than we can. So, young people, when your parents say no, there's a reason for it. They're not trying to bust your bubble, or you're not, not trying to make you not have fun. Like, you know how y'all say, you know, you had your fun, but I had to learn from my mistakes. 
and you don't know the whole story. So I'm trying to help you to prevent some of these pitfalls. But rely on the power of the Holy Spirit. You may stand to your feet. And stop being afraid to speak up. Stop being afraid to speak up. What would have happened if Stephen hadn't submitted to the power of the Holy Spirit in that moment? And he let them know. And he called them out. And he told them, you're treating the Holy Spirit just like your ancestors did. They resisted and you're resisting now. They didn't want to submit and you don't want to submit now. Everybody wants to take the easy way. But God, I want to live a life that's pleasing to you. I want to live a life that's pleasing to you. And so often people are saying, you know, we can't have any fun. It's, it's so restrictive. No. I am truly free. In Christ. I'm free. I can live a life of joy. I can live a life of peace. I have help when I go through the difficult times. I have a savior that I can call out to. This relationship with me is so important. It is so important to me. And it's like, God, I want to live a life that's pleasing to you. And I don't want somebody to see me one way in the workplace, one way at home, one way when you see me in the grocery store. Because I know, I'm going to be the first one to, to admit, my body language can be very strong. I don't have to say anything, but you can see it on my face. But it's like, Lord, temper me. I want people, when they see me, and Lord, I want them to see you. Because Jesus came as our example. He came as our example. So when I do something, I wanted to bring glory to God. The word says, I will hide your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I will hide the word of God in my heart. And sometimes you have to have those tough conversations with your children, with your spouse, in the workplace. Because we're not separate beings. This person that God has called us to be, he's called us to be it wherever we go. And sometimes people, they don't want to receive what you have to say. But if you know that the Holy Spirit is leading you, Stephen didn't have no hesitation. The Holy Spirit spoke through him. And that same Holy Spirit wants to speak through you. And it's not for us to twist the word and make the word say we want it to say, God, I want to live a life that's pleasing to you. I want my praise to be real. I want my worship to be real. I want to declare and decree the word of the Lord. And I was asking Deborah this morning, you know, even thinking about, you know, I was thinking about Pastor D this morning. And, and I was like, you know, when people still talk to me about him, I see his customers. And it's like we miss him taking that time to just talk to us. Just talking to us. The life that he lived. A life that was at times very lonely. Because he didn't fit in with the crowd. And God, I don't want to fit in with the crowd. I don't want to fit in. I want to do all that God has called me to do. I want to be led by his spirit. And that's what I want for the people of God. So when you see things going on, it's like, Lord, that is not the way you ordained the church to be. We've got to get back to that place that God is first. That pleasing God is first. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your word, O oh Lord. And Father God, we pray right now that it will take root in our heart, that we may produce a harvest for you. And Father God, we want to be led by your spirit 
and everything that has said you, because your word has already said that if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And Father God, help us, Lord God, teach us how to address conflict. Teach us how to be bold and to speak your word, oh God, without holding back, Father. Let us be sensitive to the leading of your spirit. And Father God, I thank you today. I thank you for your word today, Father. I thank you for liberty today, Lord God. I thank you for healing today, Father. I thank you for this freedom that we have in you, Lord God. That we will not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That we will pursue you with all that we have, O oh Lord. And we pray for those right now, Father, that have not accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that you will open up their eyes of their understanding, Father, and that they will see the hope of their calling in you, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, that they will surrender to you, Father. Our loved ones, oh God, friends, co-workers, Father, those that we need, those that we don't even know, Father, we stand in the gap for them today. In the name of Jesus. That they will come into the knowledge of who you are, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, Father. We thank you for pursuing us, oh God. When we were in our mess, Father, you saw us. And you cleaned us up, oh God. So we extend a helping hand to others, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus.